track today is a, is a classic uh, Philadelphia catalog piece, uh, Man on the Moon by Ken Queter. I think he is the man on the moon. I think it's a bit of a self-biographical piece. <laughs> I really like the tune. It kind of, uh, right off the top of my head, I, I sort of got thrown back to sort of early Bowie for some reason. He said he wrote it a couple years after seeing Bowie really young. So I wanted some background on the song and he was telling me all about what he wrote it about and like that you see a guy on TV and then you see him like on the moon and where is he really and like it's supposed to be like a psychotic kind of song and I love it. I wrote this song back in uh, like 1976, 77. We recorded it in 1977 in a band that I had then called The Secret Kids. And the writing process was pretty instantaneous. It, was, it came to me pretty quick. Man in the Moon, take one. Ken Queter epitomizes what In the Pocket is all about for me because Ken was someone that as a growing up in Philadelphia and listening to radio was the first Philadelphia person that I, I didn't know Ken personally but I knew he was a local guy that made it to the radio on his own terms. I was uh, impressed by uh, this local songwriter that put a band together that was cutting edge and playing by their own rules. The first time I heard the song, uh, I was, I guess I was in college, and I remember hearing it on the radio. It was unusual that what someone would be considered a local artist, if you will, would be on the radio, because that was kind of hard to do. It definitely stuck in my mind. I remember thinking, wow, what's, what's Ken Queter, what are these secret, secret kids? What the hell is this, you know? The Secret Kids existed uh, from 1975 to 1981. There were different generations of Secret Kids. It started off as a folk rock group with a heavy emphasis on uh, performance poetry. And then as we changed generations, it got into more of a heavy rock element in there. Each guy, whoever played in the Secret Kids, was very talented and, 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 and blessed with uh, a musical intuition that I didn't have, but they it formed a great recipe for music. Well, I remember about this tune was that I was not a member of the original Secret Kids. I was one of the later incarnations of that band, and I remember my first impression of the guitar player that was in that band, Alan James. So this song always kind of reminds me of hearing Alan play it, and that was my like, wow, who's that guy? Man on the Moon and a couple of those other earlier Kenny songs always remind me of, of that band and, and hearing them more as a, a listener than, than being a part of the band. You know, Ken is, he's his own guy. Not that any, everybody else is, but, but he definitely marches to a different drum. And that's what, that's what artistry is about. Is like people kind of going, what? Uh, what? I mean, that aspect draws you into him as a performer, as a musician, as a creative force. Uh, and that's what always has drawn me to him as a, again, as a creator. The very first four lines hit me hard. Uh, and there's the words I've heard before, but the way he sung them in the song, like now down on your knees. And then he starts telling the story. So that's what I actually just asked him about. Cause I was like, why, why that? You know, why did it start out with now down on your knees? Four times, it's a repetitive line. And also the line that your Panasonic went out of tune in the middle of the man on the moon. It's like they're watching the TV. Everything is surreal. So that kind of hit me that he brought in like, technology to this guy being on the moon and even the whole the whole thing being out of like everything doesn't make sense the drum track is really cool it's not at once you zero into it and look at the details and start writing things out you realize that it's not any there's no weird time or anything it's just that there's a lot of sections to the songs I mean even when I was working it out with Greg Davis the, there's, there's, uh, I, I'd say to him, what are we going to call this part of the song? And the tune like goes to 
like places that you're really surprised, like, oh, he's going there, you know? At, at one point, it's like a half time thing, and then he double times it, and it's, it, 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 the drumming on it is really, really cool. It's really quite ingenious. In terms of the different time signatures and all the little uh, musical gimmicks going on in the song, it wasn't a conscious decision on my part to have those things happen. Like, sometimes when I write a song, I'm very conscious writing it, and sometimes I write a song in sort of a trance. That was definitely a trance written song, and uh, where logic doesn't in inherit that space of my mind. So if I was writing that song consciously, it probably would have just been a 4-4 time, but when you're in a trance, there's no um, deference to time signatures or things like that. So I kind of just let it flow out of me, and when I it was finished, it was it had kind of self-written itself in a like a way that was unconscious, if that makes any sense. 96, and room is 26. Okay. Cool. Give me right. what you got, my friend. Don't be afraid of a man on the moon. He's only stuck on your TV, on your TV, on your TV. That doesn't count. He's got the cargo going with him, going with him, going with him, going with him. Now what good is this information? We all know what happened. What good is this information? We only lost the captain. From the day I started this project, it was on my list. It was like in my bucket list of songs to do. To have my song included by the guys in the pocket is, is, a, is a total honor. I am just very excited about it because it's being played by some of the greatest players in Philadelphia and beyond on my song. So that's very humbling and it gives me the chills.